today's video, we're going to be extracting the smells from some of these fantastic smelling fruits and vegetables. Guys, I am here with Grace and Kevin, and today they have come up with an experiment that frankly I'm a little terrified about. We are going to take these random items that we found in the fridge, and we're going to stick them in this steam distillation mechanism and extract some essential oils. So here's the basic idea. We have a steam distillation system that we have built, and we are going to extract some fruits and vegetable smells from some random items that we found in the fridge. We've got some onions, some garlic, some fish, some lavender, we did add some good smells with the citrus in here, and some fantastic oregano. So we got two of them here. We got one that was built by Chris, which is phenomenal, so big shout out to him. And then we got one of Nate's distillers over here. It's a little more simple, but it gives us the option to do two things at once. Well, you guys have seen us distill things in the past. We tried to extract the water out of Dr. Pepper and a few juices <laughs> and a few other things. Mixed results there. So today what we're doing is we're not necessarily trying to extract water or distill the flavor out of things. They actually are trying to condense the smells from what I understand. Yep. And you have fish and onions and garlic? Well, we got two flavors here. We got the Nova salmon and we got Sockeye Wild Alaskan salmon. Because we are fancy around here. Oh boy, sure enough, it's just it's just smoked salmon. I think it smells fine. It's not like that raw mm -hmm. fishy salmon. No. I think it'd make a nice candle. It's like okay, hard pass. Preparing <laughs> a fancy dinner. Let's go with the lemon and the lavender to start out with, please. Okay. So the lavender is pretty much good to go. We can just toss this in the distiller. But for the lemons, mm -hmm. what we have here, so we got a blender. So we're gonna cut up these lemons a little bit, toss them in the blender so we got more surface area to go through the steam distillation process. All right. So we can really get those oils out and get the smell really encapsulated in our device. While he's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and take us through the process of how this thing in this contraption works because okay. it's actually incredibly cool. Okay. So this is going to be our still that we're using. And so this is a pressure cooker. And so underneath when we go to put in the the lemon that we're gonna do mm -hmm. on top, there's actually water underneath this. So this is going to create steam. And so what's going to happen is the aroma from these fantastic lemons is going to become a vapor. And what's going to happen is it's going to travel up this tube and then take a nice right turn. And then it's going to go into this contraption over here. This is our condenser. And what this condenser does is because this is going to be hot vapor going into the system, it is going to take this and turn it into a liquid. So it is going to take the hot water and pull it out and dump it into this container where we're going to have ice in here after we get the lemons nice and chopped up. And then that cold water is going to run up through this tube and in and fill up so that is cooling our steam in here. Once that steam is cooled, it is going to go from a gaseous state back to a liquid state. And what's going to happen when oils and water are together? They separate. Perfect. So when you get the separation in here, we're gonna have the oil sitting on top and then we're gonna have the water on the bottom. After we've collected all of the essential oils and the oil from the lemons, we're going to drain off this water and we're going to be left with the oil in here. Nice, okay, and hopefully it smells amazing. So. Yes, we're hoping it smells great, unlike the fish. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you wanna go ahead and drop those bad boys in there? Sure. All right, so we're gonna put this one in Nate's distiller since it's all like mushy and stuff. Okay. And I think we've put the lavender in the nice fancy one from Chris. So in Nate's distiller here, we just got water on the inside. It's gonna heat up. We're just gonna pour this right in here and there is a little spout that comes out here to just deposit our evaporatedness into that and the oil and water will separate so we'll be able to scoop it off the top. It's gonna take a while, maybe like one hour, maybe two hours, so. We're actually gonna unplug this for the time being. We'll get this one set up, let them go, and then we'll come back later to give you an update. Update, this isn't lavender. I didn't realize that Grace had gone out into the yard and plucked this. I said, la 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 la. You know, when I smelled it before, I really didn't smell anything, and I thought, maybe I just had a stuffy nose. No, that's just not lavender. So we're gonna go ahead and use the oregano. All right, so we got a little mortar here that Grace is gonna grind up some of our leaves. Definitely, uh 
smelling the aroma being released already from these guys just by breaking up their leaves. Perfect. The difference with this steam distiller is it's a pressure cooker, so we actually have it full of water and then we got a little platform here that is able so to separate. Steam. So the steam can come through here. It's got a bunch of holes in it. So the steam rises up through there. Captures the aroma and takes it on its merry way through the steam distillation process. Perfect. All right, <laughs> that looks pretty mashed up to me. We're gonna drop it on in. And this is where we uh, use Kevin's brute strength to hold this in. All right, Swap. so we just gotta lift this up. We hook it in, find the right spot, and then twist it till the arms line up. Perfect. And then Grace comes in. Gorgeous. We love it, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and turn this on to high heat. We don't have to worry about burning anything because the oregano is set up high and it's just going to be touching the steam. I'll go ahead and get this one going. Yep. Done. Kevin's going to stick our ice water in here so you can get this nice and chilled because remember, we have to turn this steam vapor back into a liquid, which is what our condenser does up here. We can actually make it a little bit colder too and we could add some rock salt. So we got both of our uh, steam distillers going. Now we just hang out and wait as our oregano turns into a vapor and goes on its own water cycle journey in a contained environment. All right, you guys, we have been hanging out for about two hours watching this thing do its thing. Mm -hmm. We did have a little bit of a leak that we had to patch up ourselves um, to get that steam trapped in there. We've been able to smell the oregano. Yeah, and, and the lemon. Yes, and especially the lemon. Um, we don't know what happened here. We made lemon tea, apparently. <laughs> well, so it came out in a few things. So first we filled up this beaker here, and then we filled up this giant mug. And now we put this one under, and we think this is just the lemon juice coming out. You guys should have seen it. It looked like a baby barf. It, <laughs> it just, just went like, bleh. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna turn these off, or at least this one off. I don't think this is of any use. Do you wanna see what's in this here first? Sure. See if there's anything in here? Let me put down my sticky tack. Well, you are- Oh! Interesting. We're boiling still. So this is where I, I confess I did it wrong. We're only supposed to use lemon peels. I did the whole lemon. We knew lemon peels worked, so I intentionally wanted to see what this would turn out to be. We can't really see too much inside if there is that film. So of normally oil. we would have had a layer of oils and water because the water's polar and then oils are essentially nonpolar, so they do not mix. We don't have a layer like we were expecting, mm -mm. but we're gonna go ahead and let this drain out anyway and see if we yeah. see a so change. I'm gonna turn off the pump. As you can see, the ice went away in here, so that means it did its job, taking all the heat away, so the cold water comes out of this tube, and then it's a little bit warmer coming in here, eventually all the ice goes away, so we added a few more. But so it, it worked. It in, did. In the condenser portion. So obviously we got water coming out here, so what Grace is gonna do is twist that little thing to let it all come out. I do see a little residue. It's very, very thin. Well, what we're waiting to see is if we can see that thin film on the top of it, it might be the exact same color, right? It might be clear like water. So one of the ideas that Nate suggested we Oh use wow, I smell it. Is we can put food dye that dissolves in water, but not in oil. So we could use some like red or blue food coloring and that could color the water. And then we could see if there's a clear film on top of it, which would be the oil. Got some dye, got a little skinny stick. Right over here, you can see all of that oil there. So what we're gonna try here is put some of the food coloring on this stick and dip right, it you in. Ready? I don't really see a difference. I think now we just have a colored base. But you can't see from like the side or the top any significant difference. That might just be purely because we don't have enough volume. The oil could have just spread out across the top. But you can see it on camera well here that there is oil particles going around. Cause you're really hoping we were gonna get a concentrated layer mm -hmm. on top, but that just did not happen today. Um, but I mean, that's science. You try and you learn and you do it all again. 
All right, guys, we are back. We had a couple problems with the distiller in the beginning, um, but we went back to the drawing board and we changed a couple things. So we now have this tubing instead of the copper tubing, which is going to work a whole lot better. It was mm -hmm. definitely a easier process. We were able to see the lemons really come up and the, the steam really rise up and then become compressed into a liquid. And then we actually, this time, have a nice layer of lemon mm -hmm. on top of our water, which is fantastic. That's what we were looking for in the beginning, because of last time we did oregano in this, and now we did lemon, which worked a whole lot better. Yeah, and we use like triple or quadruple the amount of lemons. Quadruple. So this time was like just a dozen lemon peels, and it's worked a whole lot better. So we are mm -hmm. super excited to open up this valve and check out our lemon oil that we have in here. Oh, look at it. Oh, it really thinned out with having a larger diameter cup. It did. I also think a lot of it got stuck in this tubing as it was getting pulled down. But um, 12 lemons. <laughs> That's how much. 12 lemons and you get this much of the essential oil out of them. So I pulled it up into this syringe so we could really separate the water and the oil. That looks cool. It has a nice little bubble in there. Perfect. Um, so if we're looking at this, and then we push this all the way out. Four milliliters, is that what we're looking at? About three. <laughs> <laughs> so we got three milliliters, that's crazy. So big lesson learned here that this is a lot more difficult to get these essential oils out of the fruits and vegetables. So I've got the diffuser plugged in here. So this is just pure water coming out of here. So we want to put our essential oil from our lemon in there and make this place smell fantastic. There goes all our hard work, <laughs> turning into a uh, steam and water vapor. That smells fantastic. It's the freshest smell I've ever had in this diffuser. That's amazing. Hey guys, if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button right down there and you check out the rest of our videos on the channel.